Welcome, folks. This is Corey Babka from MarksGroupLive.com. Happy to reviewing working with validation rules in Zoho CRM. After the video is over, feel free to email us for any of your support questions, Zoho questions, anything on this topic. It's support at MarksGroupLive.com. Also, be sure to rate this class, helping out your fellow subscribers and your other Zoho users. Here's some of the main points of what we're going to talk about briefly. So validation rules help you can keep your data clean and consistent. That's the main goal of a validation rule within CRM. The way to think about it is consider how you don't want your data entered. Okay, If I don't want my email addresses to be missing an at symbol, if I don't want my states to have less than two letters, uh, that is when the country is USA, for instance. Those are validation rules. Okay. And how do we work with them? Well, what we end up doing is alerting the users to the proper method of entering the data after they enter them. Okay, so we're going to pop into those couple items just right now. Let's get to it and show how it works. So here I am in Zoho CRM. What I'm going to do is, even though this is part of our automation pieces, a little bit of our automation or workflow, I'm going to go into the setup area as normal. And you notice there's nothing in the validation rules here. This is where we've talked about before with our escalation, assignment, scoring. The validation rules are actually to be considered a part of the field data. Okay, So if I go to my modules and fields, and I look at things here, put my mouse over the three dots, you actually end up getting your layouts, module permissions, conversion, but here, set validation rules. You'll notice it's the same on the accounts. Okay, So a good one here for a lead, for instance, is if I look at an existing, I have email as a rule. We're going to create another one, but right now this is inactive, but if I turn it on, now it's activated. And what it will do is email when it it must contain this, okay? And actually, it looks should look like does not contain an at symbol. I'm going to say done. And this rule is going to be applied for all. And it will give the warning of, please format the email correctly. And I can save that. So if I go to my lead area and I look at that, and I go to Alex Alvarez, and I go to his email, and I just pop in here instead, I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm just going to say underscore because I accidentally did it. Now I should get please enter a valid email. Do the at symbol, check it, now we're good. Okay. Now this is just a different error, that's a different thing altogether as a, as a hard bounce. But you'll notice that that's what it was doing, it, was, it gives me that red item and it won't let me save it. If I go to Penny, same thing, I go to our email, I get rid of that at symbol and just do a star, for instance, because i got fat fingers, click this. It won't even let me save it. Okay, it just keeps yelling at me for that. I can cancel out and it goes back to what it was. So let's build a new one. Okay, so back into our setup. We're going to go to our accounts because I'm going to show you here what really drives me nuts when I'm talking about certain pieces. If I go here and I look at my data consistency, a couple things here. Lowercase drives me nuts. Down here, Colorado shouldn't be that way, should be CO. Pennsylvania should be PA. So all those pieces here that if we want to make sure that they're working correctly, we need to do that. So let's go set up that rule. So we go to our modules and fields. We go to our accounts and go to set validation rules. I'm going to do a new validation rule and we're going to call it standard layout. And I say choose to validate and I can just type in state. Billing state, next. And I'm going to say billing state, number of characters is going to be, well, I can say less than or equal to two. And I can also do another one. See if I can edit this and put in another piece. I actually want to say equals two. And say done. And say please enter a two character state. Okay. And now I can do this here. And this, I can actually change this and say when not met or is met. Okay, so I can actually do this if I want to say is not met, and I could say billing state number of characters, edit, and I would say uh, is, is not met would be, right, is not met would be equals two. Okay, so I need to do it that way. So it is 
when it equals to, because I can also do a not equal to, right? That's what this means here, okay? But I'm going to say, yeah, is not equal to two. Oh, uh, no, it's, yeah, we'll do it this way. Two characters. So now I can say the rule when it's not met where the number of characters equals two, the rules apply for all records, this and that, okay? Now, I'm wondering if I can do this here and edit this, and I can say choose on basic sp certain things, right? And I could say where country, billion country, is equal to, right, is USA, something like that. Like we could make it there and we could make it more complex if we wanted to. It depends on who you're selling to, right? So I'm going to do this here, all right? And I'm going to save this. And now I've got another one. Now, what I actually want to do is I want to copy this, don't I? I want to kind of make a new one. So I'm going to do as well, I'm going to say standard layout. I'm going to say state. And this one I'm going to say shipping state. Next. I'm going to say shipping state is, uh, sorry, number of characters equals two. Done. But I'm going to change this to when it's not met. Okay. So when this is not met, that it's two characters, it's going to say, please enter a state code of two characters. Something along those lines, right? And now I've got the two right there and they're both active. So now if I go to my accounts and I go to this and I say, and I look at books, books, books. Now PA is fine, okay? But if I did this and say pen, which a lot of people do, and I save it, it says please enter a two character state. And I can say PA and do that. Okay, now, can I get away with the uppercase? Not really. There's nothing in the validation rules that does that. Let's go, just go look and examine the validation rules just a little bit to see what our other options are. So my validation rules here, uh, if I look at billing state, and I look at this, and I say the number of characters, I mean, my options are number of characters, um, is, isn't, is empty, I think if you wanted to do something with the validation rule, you'd probably have to use deluge and probably do a custom function to force them to do an uppercase. A little bit beyond what we're talking about today, but this is a this is a plain and simple way of getting it done to make sure that we're getting our states clean. Okay, um, if you want to remove punctuation, for instance, like account names, you could say if it contains a period or a comma or anything like that. I want to throw in that that criteria, right? Um, if I look at this again here. We've got that rule applied. This is how we further divide, whether we want to do it, choose on you know basic uh, specific conditions where we can do other things. Like I said, country, billing country is equal to the US, USA, something like that, because we can even do ORs and ANDs and ORs in the United States or whichever. Canada, you know, see Mexico, those are all two digits, right? Maybe you want the zip code to be five digits, five characters long if it's all US and you don't want to have a 10 digit care, you know, 10 digit or um, a nine digit zip code with that, that following four. So there's a lot of different things that you can do there. But again, we're talking about um, the different, you know, how do I want to make sure that the data is entered? Okay, so let's talk about the takeaways again. So we're using validation rules today and what we're discussing are ke keeping that data clean, consistent entry, state codes, zip codes, email addresses, websites have to have a www or an http, whatever those are to make sure that you're getting that consistent data entry. A good rule of thumb, consider how you don't want it entered. Okay, It's easier to think about things as what annoys you. Like for me, it was Colorado, Pennsylvania. Those are not written right. I don't want it entered that way, so I'm going to make a validation rule to make sure we do it the other way. Okay, And then the simple thing is how do I alert the users? Okay, and you do it that way with just a little comment, makes it red, prevents them from saving it at all. Okay, so again, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a little bit about the, uh, the validation rules in Zoho CRM. Check out our, our library for other videos like this. Any suggestions for other classes, anything missing from the library, any comments on this, questions, support issues, please let us know at support at marksgrouplive.com. Until then, uh, see you at the library, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.